here. Uh, I'm Alex Estrogelki, the Chief Commercial Officer at Modidel. And uh, today we are going to talk about the added value which a software development company can bring to a product owner. And, uh, and the first thing I would like to talk is the expectations management. Uh, this picture basically shows the idea of it and uh, believe me this is the most important part and the cornerstone on which the entire relations between the product owner and the software development company can be built. And uh, to set your expectations from this report, uh, so what you can expect from it is that you will have some insights for product owners on getting value from a corporation with software development companies. And on the other hand, there will be some insights for software development companies on getting more value, on giving more value to their clients. And uh, this is not an academic study, so please don't expect like statistical or uh, absolute historical correspondence. It's not uh, some kind of secret key or magic recipe, it's just a kind of generalization of my experience and my observations. Uh, probably for saying a couple of words about myself, so what you can expect from my experience. Uh, I have very strong engineering background, I have Master of Science in Computer Systems and Networks, and then a PhD degree in some complex math like Artificial Intelligence Systems and Means. Uh, then my first 10 years of my career were related to engineering and management in a huge international company. And then last two years are of pure commercial experience uh, at my current position as the Chief Commercial Officer at Modidev. And what's interesting that in my previous company we used to outsource some parts of our product development to other software companies, so I have kind of seen this from different, uh, different sides, different perspectives. Uh, and uh, the report itself will consist of two major parts. First of them is more like a theoretical or even philosophical one. We will talk a little bit about the evolution of the software product and the corresponding evolution of the product owner and we will see how the needs and values of uh, the software product owner evolve on different stages of the product evolution. And the second part will be more practical. We will talk a little bit about the engagement models and some most suitable contract types. And uh, for the summary, I will give some uh, useful like, tips, advices, what to do and what not to do when cooperating with a software development partner. Uh, so before we start talking about different values and different uh, steps of product, product life cycle, uh, let's talk a little bit where is the value. And uh, if you open fortune, fortune list of companies, on the top of it there will be Apple. And if we talk Apple, we talk evolution, uh, innovations. So definitely the product companies who bring innovations into their products or services, they give the most value. And once I read uh, an information that the cost of labor of uh, Chinese workers on the factories who produce iPhones amounts to approximately only 1% of the iPhone price. And this kind of reflected my internal feelings as well, that there is at least two orders of magnitude between this top level of this value pyramid and the bottom level, which is pure resources. Uh, but between them, there are solutions. In this case, uh, yeah, resources are usually provided by outstaffing kind of companies, sometimes called body shops, and uh, more like outsourcing style companies. And 
as we do, like Mobidev, we provide solutions. This is achieved by sharing the responsibility with the product owner, of course not for the commercial success of the product, because we take only like technology part of it, but for delivering the product in time, in budget, and of the desired quality. And this is this definitely has much higher value than your resources. And here is the example of well, this is like schematic diagram of the evolution chain. I could define four distinct stages of product evolution and corresponding product owner evolution. Uh, let's consider an example, again let's take Apple. So first, there was Steve Jobs who wanted to create a personal computer for everyone, as he said, for everyday people, right? And uh, first of all, what he needed in this stage, he needed to find out whether there are technologies on the market which would allow him to create this product, to implement his idea. So he went to uh, Hewlett Packard, to Atari, to Xerox, so basically to the market leaders to find out the state of the technologies. And once he found out that such technologies exist, uh, when he decided to create a company, first thing he did after he sold his truck, he invited uh, Steve Wozniak to create the first prototype, the uh, now we can say MVP, minimum viable product, to test the market. And definitely uh, the second Steve was a talent who is able to implement this, this first MVP of the product. Yeah? But then, once they sold this, their first computer for what, $666.66, they learned that um, there is a demand for their product, market accepted their product, and they entered the third stage, I call it experience startup stage, where they need um, to react on the feedback they starting to get from the first users from the market. Uh, users start requesting new features or reporting some, some issues with the product, which has to, you have to react somehow. They start appearing some competitors introducing also, the ideas, the new features which you also have to react somehow, not to run out of the business. So, the product owner's, owner needs an ongoing development of his product. So, it's, uh, it's starting like to constantly update the product, release a new version, uh, new versions, again get feedback. So, this is like rolling ongoing development process and they need to the product owner needs to do it in the most efficient way he has to be fast he has to uh, be fast enough for like reacting for users feedback not to lose these users uh, they need to be faster than their competition uh, so they need a reliable professional team to perform this development in the most efficient way to be, to be fast. And at some point, the product and the product owner correspondingly reach the level at which market starts to have very strong, very solid expectations of the product. And uh, just imagine what happens if Next September, Apple doesn't release a new iPhone version. Uh, probably it's going to be to be a kind of disaster. Uh, so, want it or not, whatever it takes, every September they now have to release new iPhones. And it doesn't matter that much anymore who and how does this, but they need this regular delivery of their product. And for this, 
they need some complex and effective processes to guarantee this regular delivery. And let's look a bit into details. And here the first idea stage. The product owner, or at this stage future product owner, uh, has some idea of a product or service uh, which will probably change the world. And he needs to put together a consistent business plan for implementing this product. And uh, of course it involves a lot of marketing intelligence, but again since we talk about the cooperation with the software development partner, technology partner, uh, the best thing, the best value from this partnership, product owner can get his technology expertise. And here are two points. First of all is feasibility study. So whether there is a technology which uh, can help to create this product. And the next point is the wise choice of technology stack because it's not always the best idea to use like the most advanced or most trendy or most modern technology uh, because sometimes it can lead to just waste of money but the technology should uh, efficiently solve the business goals and this requires a wise choice of it. Uh, on the next stage, beginning startup, usually the product owner has a relatively consistent vision of his product and uh, as we discussed, he needs to create a minimum viable product to enter the market. And uh, here, of course, technology expertise is still valuable, but uh, the value focus shifts towards the talent who who should implement this product. And here product owner may have several options like hiring a local technology team or um, hiring some freelancers or contracting a software development company. And then the last case, uh, the advantage of preparation with uh, an experienced so software development company will be that this company can provide uh, dedicated professionals for each task. So it won't be like a one-man band performance, but uh, there will be like a professional user uh, interface designer will create uh, user interface, or like back-end developer will do his back-end job, front-end developer will develop front-end, and so on, and this will be done in the most efficient way and with much higher quality. And uh, usually, like managing this professional team involves high costs of hiring and motivating this team. And another point is inventory, especially if we talk like for mobile development, if you want to assure the smooth experience of wide variety of users with your application, you need probably to buy a couple of thousands of devices uh, to test your application on them, because now there are plenty of Apple devices, and if we talk about Android world, things get even much worse, because this part of the market is much more fragmented. And uh, on on the beginning startup stage, usually the budget is very limited, and the more devices bought means like less features implemented, or it can reach the level at which it can kill the entire startup. And in case of hiring a software development company, these costs are shared because um, software development company can use this, reuse these devices for testing different products for different clients and these costs really get shared and used much more efficiently. Uh, next, the experienced startup stage. As we said, they have a product which is already accepted by the market and they need 
a reliable professional team, dedicated team, <laughs> to perform the ongoing development of the product. And uh, apart from technology expertise and some specialized uh, talents, um, to be effective, this uh, team needs to be a team to employ like this, uh, synergy effect of the teamwork and all the other things which allow allows team to be more effective than a group of individuals. And the software development company can respond to this in many ways. Um, again, it can assign a dedicated team of professionals who will keep all the knowledge in, inside the team. Uh, this company will assign a project, dedicated project manager who will act as a convenient, like, single contact window for the product owner on all matters of the project development. Uh, it's also about the flexibility, like rapid team scaling. It's also about reliability of working with a huge company. So, all in all, this helps to um, encapsulate the complexity of managing, in most cases, the remote team from the product owner. So, the product owner can concentrate on his business, on um, satisfying his clients' requests, and the development, the technology part, will be fully handled by the software development partner. On the next, established company or enterprise stage, uh, the things get even more, more complex and more complicated because the, um, usually these companies have very complex, very huge, large projects. Uh, the complexity really literally reaches the skies. Uh, and in order to manage all this complexity, the software development company should have like fully fledged arsenal of tools and techniques, uh, which helps. Like usually, these are project management techniques which allow to manage all this complexity. This is, for example, a schematic diagram of a communication graph on one of our projects on the client side and on, uh, on our side and software development company side. So we see lots of stakeholders, lots of communication paths and uh, the best practices professional project managers employ, they are kind of described in PMO and this is just a list of uh, the areas which should be taken care of in order to assure this smooth ex execution of the complex project. And yeah, let's go to this practical side and we will talk a little bit about the engagement models. And here is the same evolution chain. Uh, we specify best uh, engagement models and best contract types for each stage. <coughs> Let's again look into details. Uh, so in the first idea stage, uh, the best way of collaboration between the product owner and the software development company is the consultancy. And here the first practical advice for a product owner would be just talk to a sales manager of a software development company. This will cost zero dollars, but will give uh, you a lot of valuable feedback, valuable information uh, regarding the product idea. If it is interested, interesting for an experienced sales manager of a software development company who have seen probably hundreds of various project ideas, most probably it will be interesting for the end users as well. Uh, these guys can provide some feedback on the technical feasibility, uh, maybe even like approximate estimation, so really you can gather 
get a lot of value and a lot of useful, useful information for zero price. Uh, most specific ways of uh, engagement could be business analysis, technical analysis, uh, user experience and user interface design, and sometimes even prototyping. Next, the beginning startup stage, as we said, the product owner needs to create an MVP of the product. And um, usually this is performed as a one-off project. This is not an ongoing uh, relationship yet, but it's clearly seen by the request of these guys. They usually cannot answer the question like, what's next? So this is definitely one of project and we have two options here. One is a fixed price contract, which is very good in terms of setting expectations on both sides. Uh, however, there are three main prerequisites which make fixed price arrangement effective and possible in general. First of all, there should be a relatively small scope of the project because uh, again, again as previous speaker said that uh, if you want to create a waterfall like project for years you will probably uh, end up with a target that's already gone somewhere else uh, next again this relates on the scale of the project so it should be uh, from our experience, no more than three man months of development. This is a perfect scale for a fixed price project. And uh, you should expect little to no changes in the course of this implementation. And the requirements and uh, functional, non-functional user interface of so all these Specifications should, should be pretty well defined. Uh, in this case, uh, the product owner gets precise estimate the cost of uh, and time of the cost and the timeline of his project, and uh, the, pro the software development company on the other hand understands what is requested from her, what what it should deliver. Uh, if those criteria are not met, or the product owner wants to apply more like agile or lean methodology, then the best choice would be a time and materials contract. This is kind of trade-off um, between the flexibility and the precision of planning. Uh, some risks are, and responsibility are shared between the parties so sometimes the cost can, total cost of the project can be even lower than in case of the fixed price arrangement mm, but it requires really better and more wise planning at the product owner side because mm -hmm, if there will be too many changes it can the product owner can end up in a situation when, for example, he runs out of budget and the product is not ready yet to be pushed to the market. This is usually a kind of disaster situation. Uh, next, experience startup stage. As we discussed, the best approach is the dedicated development team. It can be contracted, again, in two different ways. One of them is time and materials, as we discussed before, but in this case it works well for relatively small or irregular tasks. And the more efficient, efficient arrangement, arrangement is the dedicated team contract, which assures the constant team of engineers, like, usually it's a tone case, development team consisting of project manager, business analyst, development team, quality assurance, uh, designers and so on, who fully own 
the knowledge and responsibility of the product which allows them to be uh, most efficient. Also, this allows to keep full transparency for the client, for the product owner. And in this case, the budget is planned not for the entire project, because this is basically an endless process, this is an ongoing development, but the costs are planned per month or per week. Established company and enterprise trade is relatively similar because it's the same dedicated team contract usually, but uh, what's special about it that usually when the company, the product owner reach the level of enterprise level or established company level, it usually already has a complex product, so it usually has an in-house team responsible for the development of the core of this product and what they ask of a software development partner is um, so-called team augmentation. So they need to extend the manpower of their development team to maybe extend uh, some technology expertise. Very often case when uh, some product owners have website, like web-based business, and they want to go mobile, but they have, simply have no expertise in this, and they contract some experienced companies to do this for them. And apart from this, um, such product owner company has uh, some development cycles, established development cycles, development methodology, like Scrum or Kanban, some tools which they use for bug tracking, project management uh, and the software development company's team should be able to adapt to all these processes and tools used very fast. There is no place for like long learning curve. So this means that the software development company should be of very similar or comparable level of maturity to the product owner's company. And yeah, the budget is also planned per month. And we are coming to the finish. As I said, a couple of words like generic do's and don'ts. And yeah, first of all, what we started from is manage expectations carefully. Uh, the cooperation between the product owner and a software development partner can be efficient only when both parties understand what is expected from them and properly set expectations on the other side. And here the communication is the key. Really, you, you cannot overestimate the importance of, of communications. And first of all, the product owner should be involved and responsive. No one knows the idea and the product better than the <coughs> So, uh, please spend some time to share these ideas, this understanding with the development team. Uh, be open and open-minded uh, to share your business goals. Uh, let all your team know the goals which you want to achieve and um, product owners usually have created like one, two, three products and experienced software development companies probably will have created like dozens or hundreds of products. So don't neglect this experience and use it for your benefit. Be ready to hear the feedback and it brings a lot of value. And yeah, coming back to uh, letting the team know in the business goals, it's widely known that even some builders who knows and understands that, for example, he builds a temple in the glory of God, is much more motivated and works much more productive than the one who just thinks he like, put, puts bricks into the wall and that's it. Uh, and one, I promise there will be no magic 
magic bullets or some magic keys, but this is the one. Uh, visit your team personally. This really works like a charm. Uh, it helps to eliminate any misunderstanding, any, any doubts or concerns. It allows to establish this communications bridge and set expectations properly. This is really the tool which can turn a disaster into, into success, literally. Uh, next thing is uh, about the cost of changes. Uh, one important aspect of it, that the later the stage at which the changes are introduced, the higher the cost of these changes. So, um, it's what all these Agile and Lean methodologies are about. You should concentrate first on the most important things, implement them, and let your end users, your clients, judge your ideas. Uh, so, do important things first, prioritize things first, and whatever it takes, try to avoid the situation when you keep adding new features, changes, 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 uh, then there is no budget remains and there is no product to enter the market. This is like a bad situation. It's, it's really the worst situation we can imagine. And um, as we discussed, uh, that yes, any product is like a living organism. It's, it keeps changes, changing as long as it's alive. Uh, once it stops changing, it's dead. So, if you target to build a really successful product, it's going to be a matter of years or even decades, not like weeks or months. So, be prepared for a long drive and choose your software development partner carefully with whom you will be comfortable, uh, whom you will enjoy working with, because this is really to be a long drive. So, buy the lab for it and enjoy it. <laughs> we have three minutes for questions. I'd like to ask you, Alexey, please advise how much should software product owner be involved into the process? Oh, and this is Selena, she's my colleague. <laughs> Well, now I regret a little bit I said you that you can also ask questions because this is, anyway, thank you, it's important, it's an important one, um, but it has no short answer, unfortunately. But I will give the basic idea. So, first thing we should understand is that ooh, every product owner, be it um, a one-man one startup or a huge multinational company, it has a limited budget not only in terms of money, but also in terms of um, its time, its uh, attention, and efforts it can invest into, into its product development. So the more time it will spend The more time it will spend for managing this development process, the less budget will remain for uh, talking to the clients. And in general, marketing theory says that uh, to be successful, businesses should target the world of their clients, not like back office. It's a matter of difference between these solutions and resources. So, if the software development company is able to provide turnkey solutions, it definitely requires less involvement of the product owner and then the company providing resources which you have to constantly manage. So, the more uh, effort and this Communication budget remains for uh, talking to their clients and making their business successful. However, this is a real world and this is like an ideal situation in an ideal world, but in the real, real world, 
the situation is that um, still you need to set these expectations, give these goals. So still some communication is, should be involved, otherwise it will not work. This is basically the idea. Does it answer? Yes, it's Any other questions? <laughs>